Hi, my name is Mike Gaben, and welcome to Mission 9 of this KSP campaign. They have but a single contract to explore the moon, though it is in three parts. First is to fly by the moon, second is to gather scientific data from the moon, and finally I need to return to Kerbin from my flyby. Successful completion of all three will net me over 640,000 curb bucks, 47 reputation, and whatever science I can scrounge along the way. So clearly, we're going to attempt a flyby of the moon. But I want to do a little more than that, and perform a free return flyby, where our injection burn to get us to the moon will be the final burn we perform, because after that, we will be using nothing but the moon's gravity to bring our trajectory back into Kerbin's atmosphere. You've also likely noticed that I'm using an uncrewed probe for the first time. Besides giving our Kerbals a well-deserved rest, it will also give me an opportunity to talk a bit about communications in KSP. Actually, we will be briefly taking a look at a mission flown by Jebediah. You may recall that I skipped Jeb's mission at the conclusion of the last episode, so I'll make sure to get back to him in this video. As for this lifter, there really isn't that much to talk about as it's remarkably similar to the rocket you saw last episode take Val, Bob, and Bill into a polar orbit. It features absolutely no new parts, this time using two Thumper SRBs to get it off the pad, and still a reliant LFO engine on the main booster. Originally the payload was going to be a lot smaller. I have unlocked 0.625 meter Oscar B fuel cans, as well as the 0.625 meter spark and ant engines, but not any fairings or the 0.625 meter decouplers. I was getting all kinds of control issues, and even when I flew well, I expended way more fuel than I figured I should. I can only assume this is due to extra drag that resulted in having gaps like this one between the 1.25 meter decoupler and the 0.625 meter engine as well as the gap below the nose cone. The fact that stability was also an issue only reinforced that I was getting too much drag up top. Eventually I went with a bulkier but more streamlined design. I tell ya, I'm looking forward to unlocking the fairings though. Even this final design burned through more fuel than I thought it should during ascent. I do have an upside down heat shield under the nose cone, the reason for it will become obvious later, but I do wonder if it is contributing a bit to drag despite being entirely covered. Like I was mentioning, uh, I was burning more fuel than I thought I should with this. And there we go, that booster is dry, so we'll stage, and we'll have to finish off our circularization with the probe. Thankfully, it is rather overbuilt. I have more fuel than I need in it, so this shouldn't be a problem. That booster, by the way, does have parachutes on it, and I just jumped back to it after uh, getting this circularization and was able to bring it down to the surface for recovery. And there we have our orbit. All right, let's talk about this probe. At the heart of the probe, buried deep, is the Probodobodyne Octo Probe Core, the upgrade from the State Putnik, which allows you to use SAS while in flight. This core also has reaction wheels which provide 0.3 units of torque, which is enough to deal with attitude adjustment for this small craft. For communications, I'm using the Communitron 16 for the first time. Previously, I've used the Communitron 16S, which provides the same range and uh, communication speed but is more durable and thus heavier. So I decided to save some weight this time. My original plan was to use the bigger HG5 high gain antenna, which I also have unlocked. But once I got into calculating the range capabilities of the Communitron with the tier two tracking station, I realized the HG just wasn't necessary. If you would like to learn more about calculating antenna ranges and transmission rates, you can check out my Let's Do the Math video. By the way, the mod I'm using here to calculate ranges is called Curbulator. It is basically a fancy in-game calculator which allows you to save equations to help you calculate stuff. I'm just getting started with it, but I can already tell I'm going to be keep using it. Also for the first time I have solar panels! No more relying on just battery power alone. Generating power are 6 OTSTAT photovoltaic panels and storing the power 
st storing that power are the newly unlocked Z200 battery banks, of which I have four tucked away under the panels and the parachutes. This gives the probe a capacity of over 800 units of electrical power, which is easily enough for any transmitting I may want to do. The last significant new part are an array of lights provided by the Aviation Lights mod. I have eight white lights tucked into the service bays to light, the, light up the interior, and four amber lights flashing away outside. Besides looking good, these lights also help you see the probe better on these videos, especially when I drift into the night side of planets. Okay, so let's set up our free return trajectory. So, we'll select the moon as a target. We're going to put in a maneuver node. Now that I got the tracking station upgraded, I now have maneuver nodes, and that's the normal part of a maneuver node. But I do have a mod installed uh, by DMagic called Maneuver Node Evolved. I have never used it before, and it's supposed to add things to the maneuver node. Let's try right. Oh, yes, I do have some extra toggles here. So I have this sort of little pin icon here some extra icons on our maneuver node. Okay, so we can go to our next orbit. We can snap apoapsis, periapsis, the various ascending and descending nodes. Okay, that's that's pretty neat. Let's let's get rid of that menu though. Let's take a look at the other one here. Get rid of that. There we go. Look at this one. Oh, this is what I'm looking for. This allows me to put in the burn. Now, this burn just needs to be prograde. A prograde increment add that on oh that just adds on 0.1 meters per second okay let's step this up to 100 that's good start adding on some prograde to this burn I much prefer this to dragging those handles around oh that's too much getting out to the moon's about 860 meters per second so let's bring down the increment down to 10 add on a bit more all right, and then we're gonna take a view, we're gonna look at this from the moon's perspective. So we right click on the moon, <laughs> view from there. And we're coming around the wrong side of the moon. We are coming around the moon prograde and we want to come around retrograde. So I need to adjust the timing of this burn. I don't see anything on this menu to allow me to adjust the timing. Now this is actually pretty foolish because it was there. It's underneath that pin menu. I'm only noticing it now when I'm doing the editing that there was a thing under the pin menu for adjusting the timing, but I didn't find it at this point. So I went the old fashioned way and just started dragging it around. So what I need to do is drag the timing of this so that my periapsis, there it is, it's coming out on the left side, which is the retrograde side of the moon. And then I gotta drag this around a little bit more, get the periapsis to be a little bit further from the moon, until my periapsis with Kerbin, where is it? There it is. My periapsis with Kerbin is into the atmosphere, and I'd like to get it in around, I don't know, around 30 kilometers or so. All right, I can't seem to get it in any closer, so what I need to do now is I need to burn a bit more prograde. Oh, wait, that steps up the increment. Let's get that back down to one meter per second. Step up one meter. Oh, that's too much. Come back. Step the increment to 0.1 meters per second. Okay, let's see if we can drag it in a little bit closer here. Oh, this is so twitchy. I wish I discovered those fine time adjustments. Let's give it a little bit more prograde. See that? Oh, that's 33 kilometers. That's good enough. My periapsis with the moon is 368 kilometers. All right, we got this all set up. So let's talk about what's going on here. The key to this is keeping in mind that the moon is moving from left to right on your screen. And we are entering into the moon's sphere of influence ahead of the moon. So as we curve around the moon, our trajectory will be moving against the moon's motion. So the moon is going to be moving to the left while we are moving more or less towards the right. So the motion of the moon will be slowing us down. And slowing us down when we're way out here towards our apoapsis would mean, of course, lowering our periapsis. So this is how we're using the moon's gravity 
to lower our periapsis into Kerbin's atmosphere. If you came around the other side of the moon so that as you're leaving the moon's sphere of influence, you are actually traveling in the same direction as the moon is traveling, then the moon will be speeding you up. Whether the moon's speeding you up or slowing you down, we still call this a gravity assist. And getting your handle around gravity assist is a really useful thing uh, in Kerbal Space Program. We've got about 20 minutes to the burn. Oh, and the sun's come up. So we'll rotate our vessel to expose our solar panels a little better. Don't have a heck of a lot of solar on this thing. And what I do have is just underneath those service bay doors. So I do need to make sure that uh, they are getting some exposure. But otherwise, why don't we skip ahead, get ready to perform our burn. We will adjust our attitude and put point ourselves onto the maneuver nodes prograde indicator there on the nav ball. It is a 90 second burn, so we'll start our burn just before we get to 45 seconds. All right, let's hit it. And we are off. I've deliberately turned down the thrust on that LV-909 engine, which is rather big for this probe. So it doesn't have a huge thrust-to-weight ratio, and it's not necessary. I like my thrust-to-weight ratios to be a little bit more in the realistic realm. And by the way, if you're new to Kerbal Space Program and would like more information on how to get yourself to either the moon or to Minmus, I did put together a tutorial video some time ago. You might want to check it out. Oh, and it turned out that I overcooked it. Okay, well, so what I got to do is I got to just spin myself around to retrograde. I'm not going to use a maneuver node for this. I'll just keep it on the retrograde vector. And we're just going to burn backwards a little bit until our periapsis gets what I like. There we go. Our periapsis with the Kerbin is about 30 kilometers. And oh my goodness, according to Kerbal Engineer, we still have... 141 meters per second of delta V left and we shouldn't have to perform any more burns at all so as I said this thing is a little bit overbuilt but that's okay better that than the other way around and after we've adjusted our attitude to the positive normal vector and made sure that our solar panels are nicely exposed this thing has got about a day's journey out to the moon so why don't we jump back in time take a look at Jeb's mission. Yeah, Jeb's mission is, if you recall, at the end of the last episode, I was collecting high altitude surveys from a polar orbit, and I left two uh, waypoints behind. I, I got bored. I'd been, in, I'd been in orbit long enough, and I left behind Dinkelstein's Cavern and Ray G's Ring, which are almost right on top of each other. And uh, Jeb's plane here is featuring, well, an SRB up its backside. So with the SRB, this thing can comfortably get itself over 20 kilometers. So the plan is to just simply fly out there and, uh, and get those two waypoints. We just have to do crew reports over it. And I had picked up some other crew reports to pick up as well. These ones are all underneath uh, the 18 kilometer limit. Um, these were three crew reports for a simple contract all in around the KSC thing is, is by the time I had picked up that final crew report and noticed that I had used up about half of my fuel, it became entirely obvious that I wasn't going to get myself to either Dinkelstein's Cavern or Ragey's Ring, which are over 800 kilometers away. So uh, I'm going to have to build myself a better plane if I want to get up there, and that's going to have to be for some future episode. I thought I'd squeeze out as much science as I could out of this mission though. I landed at the nearby uh, island airport. I was able to collect some more science there. And then once I got myself back towards the runway, by the way now I'm taking advantage of not landing on the bumpy runway and landing on the smoother grass that's beside the runway. And then I drove up onto the runway. I was able to collect some more science on the runway that I didn't collect the first time when I had Jeb here simply because I overlooked it. And then once that was all done, I recovered and Jeb had collected himself 45.8 science, plus nine more science for completing the contract and 77,411 Kerbucks. 
Not so bad for such a little mission. Well done, Jebediah. Why don't we get ourselves back to our moon probe, which is just about set to enter into the moon's sphere of influence. Oh, come on. Is it? Oh, wait. Yeah, it is there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that finishes off part one of our three-part contract. We have done the flyby part. Now it's time to start collecting us some science. So we'll start off here. This one here. Start off with a mystery goo, 18 science there, materials bay, ooh, 45 science there, pressure scan, okay, I have 15.1 science to transmit, so let's transmit that. I do have a 40% science transmission bonus, thanks to my upgraded tracking station. All right, we'll just keep the rest though, and temperature scan, yes, we'll transmit that. Then we'll do one more temperature scan. Keep that amount. All right, and there we go. We are now completed, by the way, get rid of all of these windows, but we have now completed part two of our contract to collect some science from around the moon. And we are done now, the science collecting part. Oh, we do have some milestones. We have broken a speed record of 2,500 meters per second. We have initiated the first flyby of the moon. We have escaped the gravitational influence of Kerbin, and we have gathered the first scientific data from the moon. And we got these two parts to these contracts. Talk about close encounters any closer, and there'd be paperwork. That's our message for the second part here. Yes, there's enough data on the moon here to keep all of us employed for a good long while. Well, that is good to know. But that is going to be it. For the science that we have to collect you see the thing is is uh, our periapsis with the moon is still going to be in high science now you can actually get your periapsis down into nice and close to the moon to get some low science if you're going to be doing this yourself sometime but the thing is then you won't be getting your periapsis with Kerbin down into the atmosphere you can rectify that with a prograde burn at your closest approach to the moon to get your periapsis down into Kerbin's atmosphere. But I was kind of in the mood to do a pure free return flyby. I probably could have pulled it off with the extra fuel that's in this probe, but uh, I don't know, the purest in me took over. Now while we can still see Kerbin here, we still have communications, but we are going to be drifting in behind the moon and once we no longer have a line of sight with Kerbin we're going to be losing our communication with mission control so watch that top left corner there as Kerbin starts to duck in behind the limb of the moon still have communication Oh, it's got to be going pretty soon and there we go you can see we've lost the icons we can see here I have no probe control this is actually something you can uh, toggle in the difficulty you could have limited probe control but I've toggled on in the difficulty settings to have no probe control without a signal actually this is another good reason why I couldn't have done a burn at periapsis because as we come to our closest approach you can see here I ain't got no signal, so even if I wanted to do a burn here, I couldn't. But, as soon as Kerbin appears again, there we go, we've got our signal back. But you know, this thing might as well be a rock because, well, as the name implies, we are getting our return trajectory for free. There really is not much for us to do. However, once we exited the moon's sphere of influence, we got ourselves another milestone. We have escaped the gravitational influence of the moon. And then it's just the long fall back to curb and picking up speed, of course, the whole way long. So now we are actually trucking pretty good here, but we best get ourselves ready to be entering into the atmosphere. So we'll retract this antenna. We still have communication because there is an antenna built into the probe body close the service bay doors we will not be opening those again so get rid of that window oh geez we're already in the atmosphere let's get rid of the propulsion module and we got to orient this thing 
prograde. <laughs> yes, we do. The heat shield is under the nose cone. Um, so this feels a little bit unusual, I know. Oh my gosh, the heating has already started. Oh, and if you take a look at our communication signal, it is going down. That is thanks to the plasma blackout. We have no control at all now. Yes, I do have plasma blackouts turned on. That again can be turned on or off in the difficulty settings. So uh, radio signals can't get through that big bright ball of plasma that's now surrounding our probe. So uh, until that goes away, we have no control. It is nice and steady though. So that's a good thing. Okay, now the heat shield hopefully is still here. Yes, that was supposed to happen. That was by design. I know explosions usually aren't by design, but that one was. And it's still stable. That is excellent. All right, things are looking pretty good. Whoa, oh, okay, that was not by design. What the heck just exploded there? When I tested this thing, I only dropped it from low orbit, not from all the way from the moon. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have put my periapsis quite so low either. What? Oh, I think I lost materials bay. Alright, that's just the propulsion module having a good time. Yeah, the materials bay is definitely gone. Shoot! That was 45 science. Oh, what a drag. Well, live and learn. And we will most certainly be getting ourselves back out to the moon. Oh, oh, the heating is improving. Hopefully we will be regaining our communication soon. Still no communication. Come on, that plasma ball. There it is. Okay, we have communication once again. So let's open up now these forward service bay doors because the parachutes are underneath there. And these parachutes deployed without any issues. Though once fully deployed, the probe had a little bit of issues knowing which way was up. Undoubtedly losing all of that mass of the service, uh, or the materials bay doesn't help. And in the spinning around, I decided just to leave on the heat shield. I didn't attach it. I mean, this thing is really light now. I do want to get back down to the ground sometime, but eventually we did get back down to the ground and recovered it. Yeah, 914 kilograms of equipment that was recovered. That's 914 kilograms that flew around the moon, returned back to the surface, surface of Kerbin. I think that's no small accomplishment. 39.6 science, that's a little bit disappointing, especially considering the 45 science that I lost from the materials bay explosion. I now have 105 science, and I do have some more milestones here. We have returned home from a flyby of the moon. The Explore the Moon contract is complete. We've got some text here. A return trip from the moon? Is this mission log right incredible? Well, hopefully there are more incredible things coming in the future. And in the Research and Development Center, Enough to unlock one more tier 5 node, and I went with advanced construction for fairings. Yes, fairings, more decouplers and adapters, including a personal favorite of mine, the tricoupler. Uh, tricoupler? I like it, but I can't say it. One of my favorite things to actually build with. And I upgraded the runway, that cost me 112,500 curb bucks, and the space plane hangar to tier 2 as well, 337,500 curb bucks. That leaves me 185,096 curb bucks for my next build. But you know that's going to have to be for the next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time.